So how do you feel opening up more on social media, knowing that you have friends or peers or even family watching? Yeah, well, yeah, for me, it's like, so what? Like, so what if they're uh-huh. watching? And um, here to <sighs> pave the way, yeah, to, because it's so rest- it feels constricting and and it doesn't feel good right when we're constantly thinking oh what will my family think what will my friends think mm-hmm. we're doing you're doing you're doing not yourself a favor or anyone else a favor by shrinking yourself playing small so yeah I'm like so what <laughs> I guess I love that I love that yeah. you've gotten there because I it's it's still tough for me I still even though I talk so much about how to stop caring about what other people think of you there's so many layers to that and I do feel like I have like there are certain things I don't want to share online because I care about oh what if my family sees this or, or something like that so what is your what are your thoughts or your advice for people who are are paralyzed by that fear Yeah. Yeah. I love this topic so much. So the best thing I would always say is do that thing, face the fear and and do it anyways. But when in doing that, become aware of what particular judgments you are afraid of or what Mm -hmm. judgments you hold on to. So let's say you post something, let's say sensual, and then your family texts you and they're like, why did you do that? Don't be like too much or something. Let's say too much comes up and you hold on to that. You're triggered. Great, perfect, amazing. Triggers are your best friend. So yeah, love it. <laughs> aware of it. Why are you holding on to it? Because the things you hold on to are the things that you likely believe to be true about yourself. Because Eileen, if I told you you're an egg, you're gonna be that's gonna just go over your head in one area out the other, because you know you're not a freaking egg. But if I say, <laughs> Eileen, you're too much, ooh, and you're triggered, that could trigger you. Right. Probably right. because you may be believing that part of that is true about you, but you're not accepting it. You're not owning it. Mm-hmm. And that's why you're triggered mm-hmm. and holding on to it. Whereas you're not going to yeah. care if someone calls you a frog, right? So the things <laughs> you hold on to are things that you, hmm, there's some work to do there. Why are you holding yeah, on there's, to it? It's because you slightly believe in it. And so let's get to that part. Cause there are, you know, I, I like, I like to say that two triggers, like are your biggest lesson. And, mm-hmm. But say you recognize that you have a trigger, then what, <laughs> what do you do with it? Yeah, then, well, go within and ask yourself, why am I triggered? When did this, so where are you feeling it in your body? That can be really powerful. Mm -hmm. And when did it first come up? You can go back to that core memory and Mm -hmm. see and understand, okay, when did you learn it wasn't safe to be this, to be too much or too Mm -hmm. emotional, like whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And notice the stories you're then telling yourself about that particular trait that you're not owning. And then it's up to you to start owning it, to humanize yourself as well. You know, all we can't be light without owning our darkness, right? We've got to own all parts of ourselves. So there's no bad, inherently bad traits. I believe they're just, it's the meaning we give to them. And so, for example, I remember this is it was such an, a cool thing I went through a few months ago. I did like a shadow work session with a mentor and then we started talking about what I was triggered by, the haters and stuff, because I was holding on to a lot. And mm. then we're talking about being fake and how I was so triggered by it, like people calling me mm. fake. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? How am I being fake? Like I just really held on to it. And she asked me, well, what does fake mean to you? And I said, fake means being dishonest. Um, yeah, just like dishonesty. And then she asked me, have you been dishonest? And I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. And I started touching my eyes and she's like, hmm, follow that reaction. So I started touching uh-huh. my eyes. And then I realized, well, the fakeness, quote unquote, that I saw within me was my dishonesty, which was me showing up as a filtered version of myself. I wasn't being completely mm-hmm. honestly myself because I was so afraid of people not liking me. And right. so that was the reflection I saw. And then so that was a huge breakthrough for me. I started to love and accept that part of me that was trying to be dishonest to protect myself, mm-hmm. stop judging that part of me, but just observing it and seeing it as self-protective behavior and then of course showing up more honestly as myself but then a week later or a few days later I I woke up one day and my eyes were so puffy I could barely open them <laughs> and it's so interesting because I was touching them during our session and that was like where 
where I was feeling it in my body. And so I feel like through breaking through that shadow, my body was like detoxing and like suddenly wow. my eyes were puffy. I couldn't see for a day. It was really random. Never experienced oh, that before. Yeah. So it's funny, your, your body will go through things as well when you do this work. Yeah. 